Well, thank you everyone for coming. Tonight we're going to discuss uh, really everything that a parent and a coach needs to know about concussions. I want to give you all tonight an appreciation for what repetitive brain trauma means to athletes and how to keep athletes playing safe. But it all starts with my pro wrestling career. I actually have some of my concussions captured, which is nice. I had depression problems, I had short-term memory that was terrible for a year and a half. I, was, I kept sleepwalking for three and a half years and needed medication. I had headaches for five. That's when I decided maybe there was something wrong with my brain. Our group here at BU School of Medicine started around two years ago in 2008. And since that time, we've been doing a variety of research studies trying to understand the long-term consequences of repetitive head trauma in sports. One of the most important things that we've come up with with this center is studying the brains of retired professional football players and seeing in nearly all of them this very devastating neurodegenerative disease, CTE. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE, is a progressive brain disease that is caused by repetitive blows to the head. So essentially a protein in your brain becomes toxic to the cell and cells start dying at some point while you're an athlete. And usually by your 40s, you're showing symptoms like memory problems, depression, personality change. Those symptoms get worse and worse and eventually the person will develop a full-blown dementia. The NFL did not want to believe this existed for a long time. The NFL was denying the connection between brain trauma in their athletes and some of them having chronic traumatic encephalopathy. However, we managed to kind of change the nature of the debate. We also provided a lot more research proving this was a bigger problem than we thought. This is a former NFL player. This is the first case we did at Boston University. John Grimsley was diagnosed with uh, at least three concussions in college, eight concussions in the NFL. When we got his brain, we saw something very striking. What you see here from the, just so you understand, the brown is dead cells. That, that's when you stain the tissue, the, the tau protein shows up as brown. Brown is bad, brown is cell death. A 65 year old person from the Framingham Heart Study with an unknown trauma history has no tau. A boxer who's actually with dementia, you see enormous cell death. With Grimsley at 45, you see that he had nearly as much cell death as the boxer at 73. Entire parts of his brain were mostly dead. Concussions and other head injuries must be taken seriously. The professional sports organizations have come around, specifically the NFL. They've luckily become kind of a leader on this. The changes that have gone on at the NFL have been extraordinary. They've made concussion and concussion awareness a public health topic. You have to realize, I have friends who are in their 30s who are taking Alzheimer's medicine because they've had issues with concussion. Only now we're starting to see the effects of head trauma on our previous generations, the long-term effects. It's very exciting to see the professional sports change and really the culture change that's come with it. Still stopping. Go, go! Oh, oh my go. gosh! <laughs> you start a kid at six years old playing football, he plays through high school, we're talking, you know, maybe 7,000, 10,000 hits to his head. Parents and kids need to take trauma in sports far more seriously than we ever have before. An 18 year old who played multiple sports, had multiple concussions, was already showing these focal points of the, the disease. So we're not telling people to run away from the field screaming. What we're saying is understand that there are risks to what you do. You can mitigate those risks by taking proper precautions. We're trying to tell coaches to scale back hitting by half now, today, stopping kids from hitting so much in practice. Become a better coach by getting them to be better football players without whacking their head. And what's now law in Massachusetts is education. Every coach is educated. No kids going back into the same game when they're suspected of a concussion. And I think that's going to go uh, a long way towards making the game safer. What I hope will happen is twofold. First, we prevent sports from actually destroying kids' lives by finding ways to play the games safely for the brain. And on the second side, we really hope to find ways to treat and cure CTE in people who've already been affected. To make it personal, I hope this is the group of researchers that finds a cure for this disease while I can still use it. You know, I figure if the average onset of symptoms for CTE is 43, uh, I've got about 12 more years before I may need something, before I've lost so much tissue that there's really no turning back.